Hey YouTube, it's your boy, it's Lion Guy Sai. We're back at it again with another chapter from The Lessons in the Fundamentals of Go by Kageyama. We are on chapter 9. 9 out of, I think, 11. Um, and this chapter is really, really short. Um, but don't let that fool you. In it, there is a quiz of 10 questions. Um, so what I will be doing as I record this with chat uh, is pause after each diagram with a question and give my own analysis and I'll put the link to that VOD, the Twitch VOD, uh, down below if you want to see that. But otherwise, I'll go with on with my uh, choppy editing for the video. Um, so pause it, think over it. Um, there'll be 10 questions and then I'll read the Kageyama answers and reasoning. Uh, I haven't seen the answers, so when I do the questions, they'll be from my own experience and my thinking. Um, but with that, let's get into it. Proper and improper moves. A philosopher of the Meiji era once said that knowledge without love is a hollow echo. The man to preach a sermon about grain and cattle is not a saint, but the farmer who loves them. If we professionals love Go, we can bring our knowledge to life and perhaps even inspire others. Keeping this in mind, let us continue. Diagram 1. Shortly after becoming a professional in the autumn of 1949, I watched a game between high-ranking players in which White approached the upper right corner with one. I shall never forget Black's response. He was taking his time thinking about it, so I started to think along with him. Would he make a contact play at 2, or would he play more solidly at A? I was sure it would be one of these two moves, but I was wrong. The reader should ask himself where he would have played Black 2. This problem may be easiest for a beginner. Diagram 2 Black connected tightly at 1. This was the move that kept White's triangled stone most safely immobilized, but at the time it had me muttering to myself, what lukewarm professionals there are in this world. How can anyone expect to win a hard-fought game with such a sluggish move as 1? So this is a high-ranking professional? A few years later, practically the same position occurred in another game I was watching, and a different professional played the same connection at Black 1. That was when it dawned on me that this, uh, that his was exactly the kind of quiet, beautiful move that professionals are so fond of. Black 1 was the proper move. Solid and firm, there was no way it could turn sour later, so Black could fight to the limit against White's thin position on the side. You have to walk before you can run. Black 1 was a walking move. I blushed inwardly to recall the ignorant thoughts that had gone through my mind before when I had not realized the true worth of Black 1. To see how much sense you have of what constitutes a proper move, try the following 10 problems. Treat them as if they were a test. Write your answers down on a separate piece of paper before looking at the correct answers that begin on page 186. The answer to each problem is one move, and remember that it should be a proper move, not some half-baked substitute. Problem 1. Diagram 3. Black to play. Which is the proper move? A, B, C. Problem 2. Uh, diagram 4. Black 1 to white 10 are a joseki. Where should black play 11? Diagram 5 on the next page. Uh, choose from the among A, B, C, and D. During these 10 problems, we are thinking about one corner in the opening, not inquiring about the middle or end game. <laughs> Perfect. Problem 3. Diagram 6. White 1 is a standard probe at Black's corner enclosure. Black 2 stretch it, stresses the outside. The question is what should Black do if White now plays elsewhere? Should he retain White 1 with A or B, or make a large extension to C or D? The answer is one of these four moves. Problem 4. Diagram 7. This is one of the Joseki starting with a one space high approach. The question comes when White Hane is at 14. Diagram 8. Black to play. Choose from among A to E. Problem 5. Diagram 9. How should Black answer White's peep at 1? Should he stress the corner territory with A or B, connect tightly at C, or resist with D? Problem 6. Diagram 10. Black 1 to White 18 are one of the two space high pincer joseki. With 19, should Black play at A? taking Gote in order to capture White's two stones cleanly, or should he crawl out with B, White C, Black D, White E, 
taking Sente in order to turn uh, elsewhere. Problem 7. Diagram 12. Black to play. A, B, or C. Problem 8. Diagram 13. Black to play. This position holds bad potential for him unless he subdues white mark stone. Should he play it A, B, C, or D? Problem 9. Diagram 14. Black to play. Which of A to D is correct? Problem 10. Diagram 15. Black to play. Your chances are 1 in 4. Alright YouTube, those are the 10 problems. How do you think you did? Did you write down the problems on a separate piece of paper? Perhaps notepad? Did you use Microsoft Google, or Google Drive, Microsoft OneDrive? At any rate, it's time to go through the solutions, so let's check them out. Answer to problem may seem to make a nice, well-balanced shape, but it does not. Call it an improper move. For one thing, white can greatly limit black's influence towards the center by forcing him at 2 and 4. Diagram 17. Black 1 is out of balance with the triangle stone, and white has a contact that's a G at B. Black 1 at A would be the worst move, sheer foolhardiness. White would cut at C. Diagram 18. The proper move is to grip the white stone with 1. Answer to problem 2. Diagram 19. Black 1 is correct. After clamping down on white like this, black can aim for B, or for a contact play at C. Wait a moment, black A would also be proper. I cannot quickly decide which is better. Black D and E both turn out badly if white plays C. Readers who feel tempted to play black E need especially to be warned. The idea might be to play it because it is sente, but that does not prevent it from causing black a loss. Anyone who finds his hand itching to play Black E should remind himself of this warning. Answer to problem 3. Diagram 20. Black 1 is the proper move. After this, Black can fight to his heart's content on the upper side without having to look behind him. Black 1 is a thick move. Black A would be half a measure, leaving a bad potential in the corner. Answer to problem 4. <laughs> the correct move was B. Answer to problem 5. The correct move was C. Answer to problem 6. Diagram 21. Black 1 is the proper move. Black would not take Sente with A, White B, Black C, White D, unless there were an exceptionally good move somewhere else, because the penalty for crawling along the line of defeat, the second line, while White's wall grows mightier and mightier is very great. By playing the proper move, Black leaves White open at the bottom and can aim for E in the future. At any rate, he does not want to thicken White's wall any further. Answer to problem 7. <laughs> Diagram 22. Black 1 makes a smart, light shape, but when the time comes to attack, the marked stone at Black, uh, the marked stone Black, is handicapped by White's linking combination at 2 and 4. Uh, Diagram 23. Black 1 looks unimaginative, but it is the proper move. The other choices are out of the question. Answer to problem 8. Diagram 24. Black 1 is the proper move. Without it, White can count on A, Black B, White C as being his sente, and plot accordingly. Answer to problem 9. Diagram 25. This is the proper move. The rest are all improper. <laughs> Answer to problem 10. Diagram 26. Black 1 is the proper move. Actually, given just the right arrangement of stones on the rest of the board, Black A might also be good, but then White could skip out to B. Black 1 at C would be too thin, and Black D would invite disaster if White cuts at A. There is an inseverable tie between proper moves and professionalism. <laughs> Liking the proper move is part of a professional's faithfulness to the fundamentals. There are times, however, when the state of a game does not permit one to defend at the proper point, when one must pull out all stops in order to have any chance to win and cannot balk at playing improper or amateurish moves. It would be foolish for anyone intoxicated at having learned proper moves and become a little less amateurish, to lay down the law that proper moves are always good and improper ones are always bad. In the end, one can only rely on one's own strength and experience to cope with specific positions, but that is not to say that the proper moves and improper moves should be lumped together. Middle and high level amateurs, who as they become stronger try to get more out of their moves, this is one sign of their awakening power, 
find it increasingly difficult to make the proper move. They should recall the proper moves they made in their earlier days, look at them afresh, and appreciate their true value. The 10 problems of this chapter were selected to illustrate the differences between proper and improper moves, stressing cases where the proper move was best. Hopefully by now the reader has a working idea of what a proper move is. Um, and with that, we have ended chapter 9. Um, how'd y'all do? I know that I messed up a few of those problems. Um, and if you want to know exactly which ones I messed up, please check out the link in the description. Um, but yeah, hopefully y'all have a greater insight into proper versus improper moves, amateurs though we are. Um, but yeah, I hope to see you here next week for the first installment of chapter 10. Um, but yeah, catch you all later, YouTube. <laughs>